So another episode of Flight Tales with Sawyer Holland. Ooh. Ooh. There we go. <laughs> That's how we're supposed to do it. I'm going to start doing that on the frequency, by yeah, the way. Yeah, you should. Sawyer, I really know nothing about you, which is good, because you can tell us all about. All about. All about it. So where are you from? I am uh, originally from Arcade, New York. It's a small town about uh, 40 minutes south of Buffalo. Buffalo, New York. Okay, yeah. The only thing I know about Buffalo is the accident they had back in the day. Not the snow, though, huh? No, not the snow. I, look, okay. I've actually never been to Buffalo, so. but One, or, or the city you're from. Or Well, Arcade, no one's ever been there. No one's so. ever been there. <laughs> <laughs> it, it probably had a population of like 200 people, oh, if that's yeah. so. <laughs> it's, does, it, uh, does it have a stoplight? It has a stoplight, yes, oh, okay, yes. Uh, it also has a. Uh, you guys probably you probably familiar with the uh, Dollar Generals? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's, we uh, got Dollar Generals. That's all the over. that's the supermarket of our arcade. Okay. Um, there's also a uh, a convenience store called Tops there. That is uh, about the only other thing that's <laughs> okay. that arcade is known for. So, <laughs> so Buffalo is the big city. That's so Buffalo is the where y'all go. City. That's where y'all go to hang out. And- that and yes. Uh, Niagara Falls for oh, sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, I never knew where Niagara Falls was in relation. Well, now you do. It's uh, yeah. Now I do. Now I do. Grew up in Arcade for the first nine years of my life, and then uh, we moved to Buffalo. Oh, okay. Because my dad was the he became the supervisor of the Buffalo Tower. So I guess I'll backtrack a little bit. So he um, was. He's always been a controller. He has been that. a controller since 1984. Uh, oh, okay. That's, that's how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, he is. Uh, he has been in air traffic control. He is celebrating his fortieth year of yeah. government time this year. In any case, we moved to Buffalo because he was tired of the commute back and forth from. How, how long was the drive? It was about forty-five minutes, oh, so that's... hour and a half to and from. Um, and he did that for what 19 years before yeah. he finally got sick of it and he says you know what let's uh let's not do this anymore so we move closer sense. me and my say this really quick so that you guys don't go off on a tangent on it <laughs> okay. me and my me and my 11 siblings 11 uh, 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 look, <laughs> <laughs> i have 11 other brothers and sisters actually i have three sisters and eight brothers so wow yeah we were so we all, all moved to Buffalo. Yeah, so we all moved to Buffalo. Small army. It's small army. Yes, we yeah. we call it a football team, but yeah. uh, football team. Yeah, there we could yeah. we could beat the Saints. We could have yes. once in time. <laughs> <laughs> and so we were all we were all homeschooled. It's a whole school y'all have. Yeah, so you might as- I mean, exactly. yeah, it's exactly. like a whole school. <laughs> they're like, we don't feel like paying to get into any private schools, and at that point, they're like, we don't want to put you in public school, so we're homeschooled. In any case, growing up. I always, I always wanted to be a police officer, and I'm like, I think that would be a lot of fun. So I like looked into that, and I always played a game growing up, uh, cops and robbers. Yeah, like, we always, that's a we fun always, game. we always played that game growing up. So we we're like, like this, this would be fun to do as an actual job. As I started getting into high school, um, so that was that was our family thing. It was once you get into ninth grade we're gonna put you in private school so we'll pay for private school from ninth to twelfth grade going to school absolutely hated it i was so miserable oh so once you got the not once you got the high it's high school it's it's high school or or the fact that we were able to do anything that we wanted in homeschool so oh yeah and then able to not not able to at all in in private school so i was like yeah i don't want to do this anymore and uh a lot of the a lot of the state police jobs that I was looking into and anything above that all all required college degrees. So and you didn't want to go to college. I didn't want to go to college, yeah. especially after hating uh, oh, yeah, high, after school. high school. Yeah. So so I was like, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. And so my older brother was uh, he was in construction, so he got me a job with him. From eleventh grade on, I was working construction. And I was like, okay, this is this is fun. I like doing this. I worked construction for about uh, five years, uh, from sixteen till twenty-one. And at that point, I'm like, 
I like this, but I don't know if this is something I'm going to want to do forever or until I can retire. Yeah. So I was like, I was like thinking about it and I was going to get into trucking. I was specifically over the road trucking. Uh, and I was planning out how to get my CDL and all of that. And I was looking into it. The schooling for a CDL was going to be about $25,000 to get that CDL. So I was like looking into it and I'm like, I think I want to do this. Before I made the decision to attempt to get my CDL, my dad told me, he's like, hey, you should try to get into air traffic control. They've got a bid coming up in June. What year was this? 2021. Okay. My dad had this, I guess there was this thing, um, bring your child to work day. Yeah. Um, Sounds fun. My, my dad would kind of trade off because there were... 45 of us uh, siblings <laughs> he would he would trade off with us and he'd be like okay so this year you get to go to the tower with me so every time we went i i think i went to buffalo probably three or four different times and i was able to go into the tracon and the tower and see everything and i was like this is so cool but i had never really wanted to do any of it because i see all these guys and they're all dressed up so professionally and all oh. they look they look so professional, and I'm like, I don't know if I want to do that. I, I wouldn't want to do this. Yeah. The whole tower was like that? They, <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. I had never put any thought into to getting into this. I was wrong. Uh, the uh, I No, I applied for uh, I applied for HTC in uh, 2020. My oh, okay. So oh, the, you uh, mean the years. Okay, yes, you yes, off. 2020. Yeah, yeah, I was off by a year. <clears throat> um, yeah. So it was because it was, it was 2020. I didn't get my – I because of COVID – yeah. I didn't get my uh, my firm offer letter until uh, November of 2021. So a year and a half later, after I took the test, and wow. at that point, so that that was the annoying thing is I I stopped working in June of 2020 to take this test or what I thought to get my CDL. But my dad said, "Hey, there's going to be a it's called the air traffic skills assessment test. There's this test. It's like." <laughs> It's three hours. It's like a three-hour long test. Crazy. There's no way to study for it. There's, there's, there. So there are. It's because there, there are different like forums and on like Reddit and stuff that you can read that they'll kind of give you hints of what's going to be on it. But but it's they it's, don't. It's the same test like everybody's taken, like Nick and yes. Patrick and you know everybody's. Uh, Alexander and and Jake had all said they. It's a kind of a quirky question. It is. It, yeah. it is very, it is, yes. And it's like, in my opinion, I thought it was very repetitive. So I'm like, well, this is, this is dumb. But, uh, <laughs> but so you got to do it to get there. <laughs> right. Yeah. But so I took this test and immediately after taking it, th this was the funny thing is that the test was in Syracuse, New York. So three hours away. Wow. So I drove three hours there, three hours back oh just to take gosh. this test. <laughs> to take so, a three-hour test. To take a three-hour test, yeah, yes. Yeah, so, there all day. <laughs> yes, I, I was there all day. Yeah. I, ended up leaving, I ended up leaving Buffalo at, I think, like 8 in the morning. The test was at 11.30. I ended up getting home at like 8 o'clock at night. I'm like, no, this is fun. But immediately after taking the test, it, you submit it. You don't find out, like, you don't find out how you did. I, I call it that, and I'm like... I don't know what that was, but I definitely didn't pass it. <laughs> that was my that was my first response. I don't know what that was, but I didn't pass yeah, it. Yeah, I didn't make it. So, I might as well go to the trucking school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so that was, that was my thing is is I told him I said I said you know what you want to help me find a good uh, school to get my CDL yeah. at, and he says and his I I, I remember this very clearly. Uh, he said wait a little bit. He said at least. Find out how you did on it. Even if you don't pass, they still give people. They'll send you your grades. Okay. They'll send you what you got on it. Does it break it down to where you could like, oh, I need to focus on this subject or this? I don't, I don't know how it's set up, but so there's yeah, there are the different uh, parts of it. Sections. Yeah, the different sections, up. and it'll grade you how you got on those. Um, but it's like a, I can't remember how the ranking was now, but it was like a well qualified qualified or not qualified that's okay. that was the rankings and if you were well qualified obviously you were going to get in if you were qualified you could get in you might not if you got not qualified you weren't going to get in yeah. i can't remember exactly how long it was before i got my my results back but uh it said it said well qualified on it 
No. Oh, and good. I said, and, and so I, I called my dad because at the time I was living uh, I was East Aurora, which is about uh, 15 minutes south of Buffalo. I was living there in an apartment. I called my dad. I said, Dad, guess what? And he's like, you want to start looking into uh, CDL, <laughs> yeah, getting I your CDL? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, uh, no, I got well qualified. Wow. Was he shocked? And he says, he says, I knew you would. Oh, really? Oh, that's good. And you were like, no chance. There's no chance. And because I was taking the test. I'm like shaking my head. You were taking it on a computer. So like you're, you're clicking through, like you're submitting your answer and then clicking through. And I'm answering some of these questions and I'm like, I have no idea what that question just said. How am I supposed to answer it if I don't even know what it said? Yeah. <laughs> it's the same for all of y'all. It's the same. Exactly. Yeah. It is. It's as I think it was Alexander that said it was very quirky. Yeah. Yeah. She said it was, it was very, it, it, it was, it was like, and, I don't know what I'm reading right now. What, how am I supposed to answer this? What was your response to that? To the, just like, nothing. I'm like, there's, there's, I'm like, how there, there I said, I, I first said, I'm like, there's no way this is possible. There's absolutely no way. Um, but, Double checking your name. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> like so, it, it, Sawyer Holland. Is that yeah. me? Is that, <laughs> Are you sure there's not another Sawyer Holland took this? Yeah, it's the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> was it multiple choice? It was. Yes. So you just had to pick one of the what you thought the best yeah. answer yep. was. <laughs> yep. But they were all weird answers. They were all very yes, yeah. yes, uh, and just kind of had to be like, which is the least weird out of this? Yeah. Or I guess in their case, the most weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like I would get to the point where I'm just clicking, like, oh, this sounds, I I guess I'll just pick this one. Well, I'll, I mean, I'll, just, I'll just pick this one. That long of a test, that's, that's kind of what I was doing towards the end of it, to be completely honest. Yeah. That's kind of what I was doing. Do you think having your dad as a controller your whole life might have helped? Oh, definitely. Uh, it's, it's definitely helped the last three years of being, well, actually, I guess it's a little bit over two years that I've been at Lafayette. That's that's helped the most. He really couldn't he couldn't do much as far as like the the ATSA goes, the air traffic skills assessment test. He couldn't really help that as far as that goes. And then once I got into the academy, he couldn't really help with that very much. But ever since I've been at Lafayette, he's helped immensely. Did he talk about his job at all at home, or did he? You said he took took y'all to the tower, but. Was that a regular thing, or is it one time deal? Or it was. It? it wasn't very regular. I think. I think I was probably, from what I can remember, I probably was in the the Buffalo Tower probably five or six times. Okay. He didn't really talk about the job, what it entails. Each of my older siblings, he'd be like, "If you want to get into air traffic control, let me know. I'll help. I'll I'll talk to guys because being in that agency, especially." Once he became the manager, you know everybody everywhere. So yeah. uh, he said, if if you want to get into air traffic control, let me help. I will definitely help you as best as I can to get in here. So uh, other than that, he didn't really talk about what the job entails. But after I ended up getting that well qualified, I ended up getting a, a temporary offer letter. I, I believe that's what it is. It's, it's a TOL. It's, I think it's the temporary offer letter from the FAA saying you've been hired. Uh, you have to do all of this fun stuff first. It was uh, the MMPI, which is the psych evaluation. There were a couple of other things that I had to do as well. It was like there was a drug screening and then a physical as well. But then the, there were a couple of other things that I can't remember now. The The weirdest one was the psych eval. Did they make you look at cards and what does this make you think of? <laughs> yeah, the splotchy. <laughs> <laughs> no, even okay. even weirder. <laughs> Oh, weirder than that. Oh, okay. yeah. It was another. Oh, I didn't know it could get weirder than that. It was another. Uh, <laughs> it was another one of those. It was another test. I didn't think I did very well on that one. Yeah. So he, it was like. <laughs> well, so so some of the questions. So so one of the questions that is still fresh in my mind, three four years later. Do you love your mother? <laughs> And it ranges. I mean, yes. It ranges I from. I mean, you got to pick. Like, you got to pick the yes, answer. Yes. Oh. Like, it, go, it ranges from, do you love your mother very much or not at all? And it's just, it's a multiple choice thing there. And, and you just have to say whether or not you love your mother. And then there were other ones. Like, one of the ones that I remember. Do you enjoy hurting animals? That was another one. <laughs> and But it still has the ranges. Yes. So it's like, I mean, it depends. <laughs> it depends. Like, <laughs> if I answer this. 
I well, love hurting know. animals. What are you supposed to? What am I? Yeah, well, you kind of know what the answer should be, right? Yeah. <laughs> At that point, I'm I'm clicking. I'm thinking, what would the FA want me to say? <laughs> yeah. Take that one. Yeah. <laughs> so you had to do all that before, even after the let. So the let they gave you the letter, and then they yes. said, okay, you got to do you this. Do stuff. all these. Yep. They're not pass pass, but they're like, you're already you've already been given the letter of your being hired. Yeah. So. Basically, we're just going to make you go do these things. And then, so there were the the psyche veil itself. If you didn't pass, there was a, I think it's a category one or a category two. That's what Nick and I were talking about. If you got placed in category two, you'd have to go through further psych evaluation before you got oh. your firm offer letter. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I was saying to, uh, I was saying to Nick, I was like, I don't, I probably barely <laughs> got away from that uh, that second section, that oh, category yeah. two. I barely got away from that because I'm like <laughs> the questions also repeated themselves. So they were saying the same, like they asked the same questions. Oh, they times, keep asking like, yes, the same ones. So yep. maybe you'll start answering. Uh, yes. Yeah. And I'm like, there's I, absolutely no way I didn't answer some of those questions differently. Yeah, because you start losing it a little bit. Cause right. You get the same question over <laughs> and like, over again. <laughs> like, wait a second, did I get this one already? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got lucky because when I got my uh, TOL. Uh, COVID was a big thing. I think Nick got here right. He was done with all his training by the when COVID happened because I think he was. I think. He was he was in the middle of his training. That 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 was the problem for him. Oh, that's he right. Wasn't, he, but he he had already gotten life yet, and he had to come yes. down here. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So and then you you hadn't even started yet. Correct. I hadn't even started yet. So I ended up getting my TOL during COVID. So they're like. It's going to be extended periods of time before you do get in to the academy. At that point, I had I had moved down to Florida because I'm like, if I'm not going to be working, if I'm just going to be kind of hanging out waiting to get into the FAA. Might as well hang out on the beach. Exactly. Might as well <laughs> hang out on the beach. So that's what I did. But you had to go to Oklahoma City, right? Yes. To yep. do the training. So so you had a, a year and a half, and then they gave you the offer letter? Yep. Yep. And then they give you... so. So yeah, I got it in uh, the end of October. I ended up getting that uh, that firm offer letter January thirteenth of uh, twenty twenty two. They're like, "This is when your academy is gonna be. This is when your academy date is." They're not doing it anymore, but Oklahoma City was having basics and um, the actual training. Uh, basics is just like the book learning. Okay. So they would they had both of it at the academy. Now they're doing the basics only on zoom and like basically over webcam that's so, now you said yes yeah, now okay uh they they implemented that during, during uh, that COVID. sounds like yes. a covid thing yep. yeah yeah they implemented it during covid uh to kind of keep you know keep it safe yeah but yeah so my my basics were all online um so from january 13th till uh february 5th 16th was the day that I was supposed to be in Oklahoma City. So about five weeks, a little less than five weeks uh, that were in basics, the book learning. The basics is a pass-fail as well. You have to get above a 70. Okay. That's like a written test for us for pilot license. They're administering the tests, and you have to go to a, I don't know, they had like these private rooms that you take your test. So they basically like, they put this test in a private room. You go to this private room, you take your test on the, in the private room, and then once you're done with the private room, you leave the room, and you're back in the call with the rest of the people. That's how they all went. Ooh. Oh, yeah, it, that it sounds gross. Like... They're gross. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so I ended up uh, I ended up passing that with a seventy-two point six. Oh, yes. okay. Well, like, hey, it's wow. a pass. It's a pass. <laughs> was that a study like did you have anything to study for oh yeah that? yeah so there's books and stuff for oh, that yeah, mm -hmm. yeah there was th and that's actually all the the zoom classes were they were they're basically these instructors just reading the entire book to us and they'd be like the instructors that we had were pretty cool they they were like if if there was something that they really that you needed to know that was going to be on the test they'd be like okay this is going to be on the test like make sure you know this yeah. here so they were pretty cool. So after you did that, then you had to, then you actually had to go to Oklahoma City, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Okay. So yeah. So once once you ended up passing that, so I had twelve people in my class. Eleven of them passed basics. Okay. So then after that, we got like, okay, your class date is going to be this. So you have to report to Oklahoma City by this date. Oklahoma City, it was, it was pretty fun there. Um, the academy itself. So you started off with, 
all just book learning again um, in person this time, thankfully. Yeah. So it kind of goes by like weeks. So like two weeks of it is going to be like the book learning um, when you're actually at the academy. Two weeks of it is going to be the book learning. And then two weeks of it is it's called tabletop. So basically we just walk around a table that has an airport on it. And we're oh, okay. Basically Making being, calls yeah, and stuff. Yep, yeah. Yep. Just learning all that. Uh, two weeks of the tabletops, and then it's called some TSS, so it's the training simulators. Okay. Um, so we learn from those as well, and then after that, it's a week of like performance evaluations. So they're so is this like this. okay? But are you doing so the the table talk sounds like make it like ground? You giving taxi instructions yep. kind of stuff and mm-hmm. clearance, and then the next part is like a tower simulated tower type yep. deal. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's yep. Uh, that's, you hit the nail on the head pretty much. It's, it's, uh, it's kind of, it's interactive pretty much is what I would say. Cause when you're, when you're being the tabletops, someone's actually being the planes, someone's actually being the, the ground controllers okay. and stuff. So, well, Patrick was saying there was a computer or something when he went that you were, you talked to and not, it's not people. That's the, the TSS, the, the training simulators. Okay. That's what you're doing is you're talking to a computer. Okay. That was a, pain especially being from new york there was me and then this other guy that was from i want to say new jersey but i could be wrong but basically we had terrible accents and that computer the computer that computer couldn't understand us so we'd have to say something three or four different times for this computer to actually listen to us so that was a big handicap that was that was one of the main reasons i did not like the tss you get points off and stuff for certain things yes depending on yep what if the computer doesn't understand you i mean it's will you get points off or something yep. like that oh yep. okay that was the main thing that that kind of because it wasn't just us two it was uh there were there were a couple of females in the class as well that uh the the voice recognition couldn't recognize their voices either so okay. um yeah that was that was one of our main gripes in fact we uh we complained to the our our head instructor a couple different times we're like hey the the tss isn't like they're not understanding us like can't you why has the fa not fixed this because are they just gonna like <laughs> yeah just let this happen yeah or, sounds like it right. yeah that's right <laughs> that's, that's how it goes it sounds like yeah. it's been going on for like 20 years yep. yeah that's yep. right hey well you got through it yeah yeah thankfully thankfully for the the performance evaluation they actually have uh, remote pilot operators, RPOs. I think uh, Alexandra was yeah, one of those. Yeah, she was one, yeah. So they have RPOs for the, the performance assessments. So you're talking to an actual person, not... Yes. The, yeah, it's, the but... computer is still technically... Yeah, you, you're talking to the computer, but the, the person, if the computer doesn't accept it or if the computer doesn't read it like they weren't doing it all in TSS, the person will fix it okay. manually. So that's that's what's good about the performance evaluations. So you got through it. Did everybody get through it? Eleven people. Nine of the twelve people passed. Okay. Um. So then, uh, what? So nine of the twelve, and then y'all have to pick us where y'all want to go. Yes. So after that, it's it's just basically what the FAA needs. They give you a list. Sometimes they'll have like they'll have others on there. So like, uh, Merrill, Alaska was one of them, and then uh, St. Thomas. The Virgin Islands yeah. was on there as well. Nobody wants to go to St. Thomas. I actually was going to. But oh, were you? Okay. Yeah. I don't think Nick wanted to go to St. Th- uh, there was, or maybe there was Puerto Rico or something. I don't, it, I, whatever. Nick didn't want to go to one of those places. Nick was, yeah. Nick was telling me he didn't want to go to St. Thomas because it was on their list as well. Because they're they're really short staffed. They're only level four. That's the problem. Is they don't get paid anything. So oh, okay. You're yeah. basically, you're basically, pretty poor if you live there. Yeah. Yeah, because the cost control. of living's high. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So that's one of the main reasons nobody ever wants to go there. And I was like, because <laughs> I was, I was talking to my dad after. So I ended up, uh, I ended up graduating first in the class. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> man, you passed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it went from not thinking you would pass at I all. I know, not pass the written that uh, other test, <laughs> yeah. and then uh, like I'm first. So you got to pick. Yes. Yep. First, okay. So, how did you? Why did you pick Lafayette? So, I was going to go St. Thomas, but then, so my dad, being having been in the FAA for a long time, said, "Get your radar ticket." Oh, okay. Um, St. Thomas is the tower only, and he also said nobody ever wants to go there. So yeah. he said you're probably stuck there. 
little did I realize I'm stuck in Lafayette too. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that advice uh, going to a ta- a Tracon doesn't seem to work much. I don't know from talking to the other people that you'd think that oh, getting the radar uh, experience would help you. And but, it uh, definitely does because so um, I have put into a couple different facilities now. Yeah. Um, and I'll just say this much: if uh, if I were to put into different facilities, so I've been I've been putting into up down facilities or facilities with tracons. Yeah. Um, I've been putting into different facilities with those. So then Lafayette was uh, was it the only one that had radar? No, there were uh, so. Let me see here. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to remember all of them. I'm not gonna list them in order. Lafayette was on there twice. Okay. Clarksburg, West Virginia was on there. So wait, wait. Why was Lafayette twice? Uh, oh, it's based on how many people that He's each done. place needs. Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, so Lafayette was twice. Clarksburg, West Virginia. Lafayette, Indiana, which I have a funny story for you guys here in a oh, little I've bit. Oh, I've been as there well. before. Have you? Yeah, I've flown in there before. Actually, it, I flew Drew Brees up there because he was going to Purdue for the. Uh, I was for about some to say, kinda, yeah, Purdue is yeah. really close to there. So, yeah. um, Chino, California. Let me just tell you guys right now, I'm never going to California. Okay, absolutely not. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a different world over there. Different world. Yeah, <laughs> different world. So Chino, California, Napa, California, Casper, Wyoming, twice. Okay. So what made you pick Lafayette? So, the big thing was. I had really never heard anything about Casper. I've I've been to I don't really go west, so I've pretty much been east coast my whole life. Um I had never really heard anything about Casper, so I'm like I don't really want to go there. It was between Clarksburg and then here because other than Casper, um these two were the only ones that were up down. So yeah. my radar ticket there was another guy that was a little bit further down on the list, or that was, I think he was like eight, eight out of nine. Um, and Clarksburg, can't remember if it's Charlotte's airspace or not. Or it's not Charlotte's airspace, but it's like within Charlotte's jurisdiction. So, and he's from Charlotte. Okay. Um, so at the end of the day, I was like, basically, my dad said to get a radar ticket, so I'm going to get a radar ticket. I, I've been to Clarksburg I actually uh I worked in Clarksburg for a little bit um but I'm like at the end of the day I'll I'll let you go there so that you can get back to Charlotte uh and I'll take Lafayette yeah so did anybody else from your class come down here no oh no oh, so that other opening still available the other <laughs> opening, yeah well that's probably what uh the two new trainees are at. oh okay or some of the other ones but yeah so uh so you came, what year was, that was last year then, wasn't it? So, uh, 2022. Okay. So it was, uh, so, so the, uh, the academy was from January 13th until April 15th is when we made our selections. Okay. I ended up getting here at the end of April because they give you, it's called change of station leave. They give yeah. you a certain number of days there. Um, I believe mine was, I think it's 40 hours of change of station leave. So I ended up, uh. I ended up taking all that on the front. I wanted to go see family because I hadn't seen them in a couple, probably about a year or so. Yeah. It's like, I want to go see family really quick and then I'll come back. Yeah. So you started here and then once you, you had still had to do training here, right? Yep. Pretty much. Yeah. You, you, you get on the, uh, it's what we call, uh, on the clock pretty much. It's a training plan. You get set up, uh, you get a, another class taught to you. Usually by a staff support specialist, unless you don't have one of those, which we didn't for the, last, the first almost That's two like years. the training director or yep. whatever? Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. They're the ones that are supposed to teach it. We just had this one guy who had been certified to teach it. And then as soon as that uh, class is up, you basically just, you kind of, you, you have to get used to the maps or basically the air. Or, oh, the yeah. The uh, airspace the or airspace. just the taxiways? The, the taxiways, pretty much. For, yeah, yeah as, as far as ground goes. Once you get into local, then you do have to uh, start learning the airspace, learning the fixes and stuff. And then once you obviously get into radar, you got to learn all the approaches at the different do, airports. Do you know where Sunset's at? I have no clue where Sunset's oh, at. Oh, man. But if you told me if you told me what Sunset <laughs> actually is, uh, what is it? Hang on a second. We're going ha- to have to get a sectional on. in here. 
That's what we need back here is a sectional with all the. It's not gonna say sunset though. It's not. Yeah, gonna well, say, no, it won't. Yeah. You know. Okay, where is sunset? So, though? well, really since he since he learned where the area is, he's supposed to know where sunset. Okay, so it's about fifteen miles uh, north of here on I forty nine. Uh, so it's a good place to call out because it's right before we enter the ten mile ring. So if you're flying it, you can see the interstate turns around sunset. So it's a good yeah. landmark for us to point it, to point out. Was there an airport there? Nope. Okay. It's, that's where Red Oak's supposed. You know, the, they're doing. Yeah, I know Red Oak. Yeah. yeah, that's where Red Oak's at. It's okay. kind of Red Oak's a little more to the west of sunset, but it's that you know where Red Oak is. That's where oh. sunset's at. So the next time when you come in, you say you're over just east of Red Oak. And yes. everyone will know where you are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's got the little flag, like on the sectional, that's got the little flag. There's a little flag that's a, like a VFR marker. Are you where looking at me like I'm crazy? Is. Where Sunset is. Yeah. I'll have to look at that again because. Yeah. Well, wait, bit... wait dude, we don't have one in here. Anyway, you had oh. to learn all the spots. So you learn Mace. Mostly the airports, where all the airports are yep. around here. Yeah, and then all the approaches to go into these airports. and So y'all doing local first, right? You start out local? You start out ground. Like ground. Okay, yeah, ground, ground flight and then, data. And then tower. Yep. Yeah, ground flight data and then uh, local tower. I guess and then, ground and, and clearance are probably the easiest yes. to deal with. You don't get too much crazy. Well, you might get crazy students. <laughs> yeah, the, saying random stuff that I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> I don't know what's happening right now. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. What other places you said you put into other um, towers? Where have you tried to go? Florida mostly, for for now at least. Um, once my so I've also been looking into going the route of a supervisor. Um, that's the easiest way to get out. So, okay. I think the, uh, they always need supervisors. Yes. Yep. Uh, so Tallahassee's a big one. So you don't want to go back to New York? I don't think so. No, yeah. not with, so snow's a headache yeah. to deal with. So I don't know if I want to I deal with I never lived that. in that, li being down in Louisiana. You didn't miss much. <laughs> I didn't miss. <laughs> you didn't miss much. <laughs> yeah. It looks like it could be, you know, I've flown to different places that had, snow and it yeah. can be annoying after a while because yep. it's wet all the time and yep. oh boy <laughs> i know tell it yeah that's the sectional yeah yeah see yeah. the little flag there we go yep. can you I see the flag yep look at that there you go that's where gotta... sunset's at <laughs> the next person that asks me where sunset i'm gonna be like oh, look at the sectional well he doesn't like the snow i don't mind the snow i just it's a pain to work around, especially in the air traffic control world. Yeah, yes. I guess I didn't even think about that. Like, I mean, runways and stuff, you have to worry about. Yes. Especially like in a, uh, I mean, if it's actively snowing, yep. you got to do de-icing. Yep. And then you got to get them out of there fast. Yep. You got, yes. And that's the thing, especially at a, uh, at a busier airport, they're, constant headaches because of it yeah. and and that's where i do want to end up is at a busier airport so i just feel like i just feel like if i went to to new york i feel like it'd just be a constant headache dealing with the snow yeah so i figure i'll take my chances with the occasional uh hurricane or tornado <laughs> or <laughs> well, you'll get a hurricane yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. the yeah. occasional hurricane or tornado that ends up hitting us so I think I can deal with that. I'm still going to, every time you say sunset, though, when you're flying, I'm still going to ask you. Verify that. Do you side. recognize me? <laughs> well, we'll just have everybody in the tower, like, uh, asking, where's yeah. sunset? <laughs> <laughs> verify you're just east of Red Oak? Yeah. No, I'm over sunset. <laughs> <laughs> Next time you fly, I'm asking you, verify okay. you're just east okay. of Red Oak? <laughs> no, I'm over sunset. I don't know where that is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I do want to kind of ask you and see if you have any questions about, like, you know, when we're up there training. I know you you, you haven't flown at all, right? Nope. nope. Never flown before. So can you think of any questions of what, hey, why y'all do this? Or why y'all do that? Or this or that? You know, I mean, I know on our end, our students, like, I might sit here and tell you, okay, tell them. That you're assessing six five seven five two, 
uh, we're going to be departing to the north, climbing to 3,000, heading 360. And once they, they might repeat it back to me perfectly. And then when they hit that button, my name's Jeff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that it comes out completely. And then, you know, you might come back. Uh, who's that? <laughs> Can, uh, last airplane, please repeat. <laughs> <laughs> so it can't it, verify you're just east of red oak yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so you know i mean it's it comes out and y'all are probably like man what is going on over there you know so uh, i mean in other situations i don't know if you have anything for the most part i definitely understand that because even even still having been i mean i've been certified for about uh eight months completely certified for about eight months now even still i'll I'll go to key up knowing exactly what I'm going to say and what I wanted to say <laughs> does not come, come out. out. Yeah. Just, something totally different comes out. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, I don't know why I said that. So, <laughs> so that, that still happens. And, and some of the guys that have been certified to hear, I've heard them say some crazy stuff. So that's completely understandable. So when you guys are flying, when you guys go to the North practice area, when you guys are like dropping altitude when you guys are going down to like 500, 400 feet. What are you, what are you guys doing there? Oh, those are engine failures, practicing engine failures. Yeah. So, well, oh, I bet that does look weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They probably think they're gone. They're gone. No. Yeah. yeah. No, we're practicing engine failures. So like, especially over Red Oak, like sometimes we'll practice yeah. it there yep. and we'll pull the, we'll pull the throttle to idle. Yep. And then there's a, the student's supposed to pull out their, you know, pitch for best glide yeah. and pick a field, which we usually already established. Like, all right, you got your field's Red Oak. Okay. And um, where's Red Oak? <laughs> just west of uh, Sunset. <laughs> <laughs> just west of Sunset. So then they're supposed to get their checklist out and yeah. try to simulate restarting the airplane. And then if they, the scenario is we normally don't restart, so then you have to try to land at Red Oak. And so they're supposed to maneuver to where they can line up into the wind yeah. and land on land on uh, the runway or the okay. fi- the field. Once you do get certified, once you've been there longer, I think we all we all have our cutoffs. So I know a couple of the controllers are going to cut you loose as soon as you get below a thousand. Yeah. Oh, a below a thousand. Yeah, below a thousand. Yeah. So so for us. I, I haven't think- I haven't had that too mi- too much. I have there's uh one controller that cuts us off when uh we get outside the airspace. Yep. So sometimes I'll do it in Opelousas when I'm flying with the student because I want them to actually land. Right. And it gives them the challenge of figuring out well, do I put flaps in? Do I can I keep gliding? Do I should I turn in now or you know, the challenge of like making the field. Yeah. And yep. uh so I'll do it over there. There's not much traffic over there, so when you see me do it in from three thousand on down, <laughs> that's probably me. <laughs> I believe the cutoff's like three hundred. I think if you you go below three hundred, then we're kind of like, okay, like radar service is terminated. Let's go on and maintain VFR, and then like call me when you're back inbound or back to do maneuvers. Yeah, because at that point there's like the radar contact loss procedure. So if we do lose radar with you, especially going below three hundred feet. It's very oh, y'all have to initiate some yep. kind of. Yep. Okay. Oh, well, that's good to know. See, there's stuff on our end, too, that we're not aware of that. Oh, okay. That's why they're doing that. Anyway. How do we end this thing again? I think that's I think that's it. But. Yeah. Flight tales. Woo-hoo. If you made it this far, you listened to the entire episode. And for that, we would just like to say thank you, and we hope you enjoyed it. We would also like to thank Sawyer Holland for sharing his story. If you have any questions about today's episode or suggestions for future episodes, just leave a comment or message us and we'll do our best to answer. If you'd like to check out some fun aviation videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Owens Flight Training. Or if you'd like to get more information on becoming a safe, knowledgeable, and confident pilot, just head over to our website, owensflighttraining.com. 